a sermon all planned out. I, I, I try to keep a few of me on, on tap. Had one planned out I was going to do today, and I didn't get it all accomplished. So I was praying last night, and <laughs> the, as the story unfolds, I find myself standing and watching Colt. And she's colicky, so I'm standing and watching. So, huh. I remember in Ephesians, I preached on this a couple of Sundays ago. Ephesians uh, 6.10, about the armor of God. I'm not going to read the whole armor because it's a good story. You ought to read it. What I'm going to tell you is, is in Ephesians uh, 6.10, Paul said, Finally, be strong in the Lord and His mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the evil schemes. And then skip on down a bit to 13. He said, Therefore put on the full armor of God so that when the evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground. And at 14, he says, Stand firm then with the belt of, tr of truth buckled around you. And he goes through the whole armor. And he says three times, Stand. Well, I can remember back in my army days. <clears throat> now, it, back in, in Caesar's times, it was called a siege. And nowadays, I think we call it an embargo or a sanction or something like that. Now, if you want to know the legal ramifications, find somebody, Deb or somebody. If you want to know the, the, the financial reasons and ramifications, talk to John. I know the, the execution part of this, okay? Now, they taught us all kinds of tactics. And one was, Julius Caesar was a master at this. You go to a city or a, or a fortress, and you put up your embattlements. You put up big things you can hide behind. You put up your, your trebuchet or the catapults or whatever you want to do, and you stand there. Now, you don't attack because wars were won back then through attrition, meaning I can last longer because I got more food. So you set up around this person's fortress, which uh, one time Caesar set up around it. Caesar was broke at this point in time because of all the, the campaigns he was doing. He had seven legions. That's uh, roughly, I, I think it was like uh, eight to 10,000 people with him. And he set up this, this embattlement around Pompey's fortress, uh, another general, who evidently they didn't like each other. <clears throat> now, the ticket is, I'm going to set up, no one leaves, and no one comes in. No supplies in, and no survivors out. And we stand there until you raise up the flag and I'll give up. If we engage, then I'm losing guys, and I don't want to do that. Okay? So we stand there, and it's a waiting game. Now, I can go hunting, or I can go back to the, to the store and grab a couple of Twinkies or something to eat, but you can't. And if you were unlucky enough to build your fortress where there wasn't a spring or, or a well, you're in trouble. That is what the devil does to us. Now, we've done it. We've done it with Iran. We've done it with, with Cuba. We've done it with, with several different countries. The, the United States and, and the European Union has done it to different countries. Just set up a blockade. Nobody comes to help you. You ain't getting no help anywhere else. By sea, they put up a fleet of ships. On land, they put a bunch of soldiers. Uh, a matter of fact, in the Gulf War, they, they did this, and we set up all around the guys, and when their planes took off, they were shot down. So what they had to do was they had to take off and land in Iran, you know? Because effectively, we'd cut them off. This is an effective tool. Satan does this. Believe it or not, <clears throat> he knows these tactics too. He's been around a day or two. So he sets up a blockade around us, a spiritual blockade. And we cannot, or we feel like we cannot reach God. 
Why is this happening to me? I think I've said it three or four times here today, but when I got home Sunday, there was a, you know I mean? I rolled in, and PJ was still gone, but I rolled in and got out. I hadn't even unloaded the horses yet. And I see a baby goat. So I run over there, and I take it out, and I'm, I'm, Mama had, had 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 it, and stand, stood up, and she stepped on it inadvertently and killed it. So I'm trying to get the baby, you know, collect it up, trying to get Mama cleaned up, and I look up, and a horse has had a baby right there. You couldn't stagger these things, right? I mean, you know, a couple of hours. No. So now I'm having to get this baby taken care of. That baby separated out from everybody else because Mama's stressed out for some reason. We found out later it was coyotes, but I get Mama separated out, put her in a pen. I get this Mama separated out, put in a pen, and get her cleaned up. Get, you know. Make sure everybody gets medicine for, for different ailments they might have. And about the time I get everything hooked up, PJ rolls in. God bless her. Anyway, so we had a, a, a really fun time last Sunday. And it was like I'm having to take care of all these fires around. I mean, I've got horses to unload. I've got, I've got this horse to spread, separate out. I've got this goat to separate out. I've got these goats to milk. I've got, you know, and I'm so busy, I can't think straight. And, and what suffered? We forgot to pray for that colt or that mama goat. And as soon as they, they land, we try to pray for them. Forgot that. What happened? The devil said, no, 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 no. I don't want you talking to God. I'm going to get you busy. And he did. But we remembered. And the cool thing about God is, no matter how long you wait, it's never too late to go ahead and pray. You know what I mean? But the devil set up a spiritual blockade so that we thought we didn't have time. That's happened to me once before. I got busy we're going on a mission trip with my mom and dad's church. I got busy uh, doing all the logistics to move our church and get them in with mom and dad's church and go to Montana. Um, during the whole process, uh, being the ADD guy I am, I go through my mental checklist and I checked off everything I did except that one thing I checked off I actually didn't do and that was pay the electric bill. And as they're coming to turn it off, I had to you know, hurry up and call and get it turned back on. So I'm getting all this stuff done. I mean, the devil's really getting me busy. We had to raise funds. We had to do this and that. All the way up there, I'm having to, I drove our church bus and, and, and I had a trailer behind me. I drove up there, got it all done with busy with the mission trip and, and we did vacation Bible school for the kids. We, we helped uh, the housing, the, the church that was up there. We helped uh, you know, build the uh, uh, fellowship hall and things like that. And uh, at the end of it all, when you can breathe now, and I'm driving home with my church bus full of folks, trailer behind me, and I'm driving and everybody falls asleep on me. And I'm thinking to myself, Lord, I'm so sorry. I got busy, and, and, and I didn't have time to sit and, and study the Bible and, and, and pray and, and, and just talk to you. I didn't have time to spend with you. And it was like, <laughs> it was like a, a conversation because it was almost as if God said, Oh, I'm sorry. Did, did you need to help me to help you get some time? Okay, boom, the engine blew. <laughs> so, we take all the people from our church, except me, put them, disperse them between the other buses, take the trailer off of this one and hook it onto my dad's bus. And I stuck, I was stuck in Lyman, Colorado for three days. Have you ever been to Lyman, Colorado? There is nothing to do. I mean, an hour before sundown, they roll the streets up. So, I got in the only hotel. It was a Motel 6 there in Lima, Colorado for three days. 
for uninterrupted time with God. I know never to say that again. And I've had people come up to me and say, you know, I'd come to church, but, you know, man, I, I work so much. Do, 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 do. Don't say that. Because God can take care of that for you. <laughs> he, he has that ability. But the thing is, when, when, when the devil puts up that blockade, we don't need to make excuses. And the devil's followers are just like Caesar's followers. I remember when I was, when I was studying Caesar, and, and he went through and, and he set up uh, against Pompeii. Now, like I said, Caesar was broke. I thought he wasn't broke. He was shattered. He had zero money. And his troops were having to dig these, these roots out of the ground, these bitter roots, grind them up, pulverize them, and make this hard bread. It was, it was bitter. It was terrible. And it would take these loaves of hard bread, and they would write a note wrapped around them and chunk them over the wall. And the note said, as long as we have this to eat, we will never leave Caesar. That's dedication. Well, these guys were eating stuff that was not sustaining life. But they were dedicated. Now, we talked about what a, a blockade, what a, what a, a besiegement is. Let me ask you a question. Is it easier to be on the receiving end of the siege or the execution end? In experience, I can tell you ex execution is a whole lot better. It's a whole lot better. So, we're going to get all of our supplies ready. We're going to have food. We're going to have water. We're going to have bullets. We're going to have everything we need to sustain life. Comfortably. And we're going to stop someone else. We're going to choke them out. The devil's trying to do it to us. Now, when the Romans went in to... Uh, it was in, in Britain. I'm trying to remember the, the tribe of folks that they were going after, the ones that worshipped the, the oak leaf, laurel oak. It was uh, Druids. When they went in to, to besiege the, the main Druid capital, a message was sent out. How? I don't know. But this king said, okay, everybody else set up an encampment around the Romans. So, in essence, they were, siege, they were besieging the seizure. Uh, they were, it was complicated. Anyway, they set up around the Romans. And the general of the Romans said, uh, you know, when, when they were asking, what do we do? He said, we're either going to win or starve. What did they do? They eventually enticed the Gaul, or the Druids, to attack. When you attack, the tables can turn quickly. Because the Roman soldiers, being professional soldiers, and used to, I mean, really, really used to being in warfare, could fight. And they beat the Druids. Had the Druids never attacked, the Romans would have starved and, or left. But he was smart. Enticed them into attacking. Now, the devil is trying to set up around us a spiritual battle, embattlements. What we need to do is turn that around. <coughs> Don't entice him to attack, but we need to get our supplier, which is God, His Son, Jesus Christ, and thousands of legions of angels to set up an embattlement around Him and choke that rascal out, right? Or entice Him to attack them. It don't work out. I've read it in the Bible too much. Okay? We have at our disposal... The best army, spiritual army, in the universe. In entire creation, we have the best army at our disposal. Why do we try to go it alone? 
I, I don't know. I, I, I'm guilty of it too. Why do we try to go it alone? The devil sets up in his, his, his embattlements. He sets up and he, he's railing the star of us out. He'll attack. Don't get me wrong. You bow up at him, he'll attack at you. Now he'll, he'll attack and he'll get you. Why not have God besiege him? God, I need help. I mean, look at the Alamo. All these Mexican guys stood up and, and, and they besieged the Alamo. They didn't attack yet. But they, they, they wore down the morale of the Texans and then they attacked and they, they overwhelmed them. There was no help. Why don't we get an army to back us? Okay. If, if you're curious about this, we'll go through the Bible and I'll show you. When, when Satan was cast out of Satan, of Satan, when Satan was cast out of heaven, there were three archangels. There was Gabriel, Michael, and Lucifer. Lucifer being Satan. Lucifer rebelled against God. God kicked him out of heaven and he took a third of the angels with him and there are our demons. There are the, the followers of Satan. Now, he has a third of the, the heavenly bodies with him. That means we still got two-thirds in our favor. Now, I'm no mathematician, but I think the odds are kind of in our favor. Am I wrong? I, I don't know. I just... <laughs> when, when Daniel was, was, was praying and fasting and, and, and Gabriel finally showed up, he said, I'm sorry. But I was doing battle with the, with the prince of Persia, meaning, meaning Satan. He's, I, I was doing battle with him for 21 days until Michael showed up to relieve me. And when Michael showed up, it was over. He's like the fighter. He's the good Chuck Norris of fighter of angels. You know, he's, he's good. So what do we do? Do we want to set up an embattlement? Do we want to have our army come and take over? We want to have somebody fighting for us so we can just sit back and go, yeah, okay, he needs to be taken out. Okay, look, no, take care of that. That is what God's here to do. To spiritually battle Satan, to keep him off our back. Now, there's your history lesson, by the way, your military strategies. Besieging. If you cut off their supplies and you, you just basically choke the life out of them, they will give up. I know this, we did it with a mouse when I was in the desert. How in the world, they got a single stinking mouse in the middle of the, the, the Sahara, I do not know. But we set up, we dug in, we got our, our bunker set up and we had a stinking mouse come in. He was eating all of our grub. So we set up an embargo. You know, and he, we starved him out, he took off. So it works. Uh, personally, I know this. People were looking at me like, huh? Yeah, it, it really does. Today, if you want an army, spiritual army, that has no match in your corner, you want them backing you up, you want them going before you, there's a single way to do it. That's accept salvation that was paid for by Jesus Christ, that was given to us by God the Father through His Son, Jesus Christ, paid for on the cross. Are you here today without, without the protection? Are you here today sitting in your fortress, getting beat up, getting starved out? Are you spiritually hurting? All you have to do is, is ask for the help. Lord, help me. Lord, I'm sorry for what I've done. Please help me, Lord. And here we are. He'll show up. He'll show up and, uh, and, and he'll really get it done. Today, if you're struggling and you need to, you need to get that help, I'm going to lead you in a prayer.
It's a simple prayer, simply asking God to come in your life to, to save you, to, to help you out. And you're a member of His family. Follow me in His prayer. Lord, thank You so much for coming to earth. Lord, living a perfect life, dying a, a blameless death, a horrid death, Lord, so that I didn't have to. Lord, you ransomed my sin. You ransomed my life. So that while I'm here on earth, I can have an army at my disposal. And when I leave this earth, I can rest in you. Lord, I pray that you empty the sin out of my heart. Fill me up with your Holy Spirit. Lord, I, I confess Christ as my Savior. And I pray that you walk with me now. We ask these things in your name. Amen. Amen. Oh, they up here. Uh, today we're having uh, having our communion. As Fritz said, this is not to be taken lightly. Uh, as these guys pass it out, I'm going to allow some uh, time for you to reflect on what you're doing. Reflect on what's in your life, in your heart. And if there's, a, if there's a stain in your heart, I pray that you ask God to forgive you. And, and please, don't do this like me. Just ask a blessing on this. Lord, I thank you so much for your son, Jesus Christ, who died on the cross. Lord, I pray that you forgive me of my sins. Lord, I pray that you bless each of the men here that are serving this, the men and women who have, who have put this together. Ask a, a blessing on each one who partakes in this. Lord, I ask these things in your son's holy name. Amen. Amen. These guys served. Up here, uh, 
besides the military tactics, that's certain. But if you're confused about salvation, I was talking about the gift of God, which is Jesus Christ, His Son. I'm going to take my cup of coffee and I'm going to go in and I'm going to sit down. Y'all come in and have a cup of coffee with me or a glass of tea or whatever you want. But don't leave here without knowing for a fact that when you leave this country, when you leave this world, you're going to be living in the arms of Jesus Christ.